around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Break his neck. Like a man to work just ain't never done. Uh, mister? You think somebody else in this town might take a hand keeping up their own boardwalk, but no, sir, I gotta do mister? it. Mister? Don't bother me now, boy. <laughs> gotta get these nails in solid. I come looking for the marshal. Well, that's his office right there. He ain't in there. Well, you'll just have to wait then. I got a message for the marshal. Look, I already told you. You found his papers. Let's see it. I'm supposed to give it to the marshal person. Well, you ain't going to give it to him if he ain't there. When he be back, mister? My land, boy, I got enough to tend to without fretting about where Mr. Dillon is every minute. You want me to give the paper to him? I ain't to let loose of it to nobody else. Well, it'd be all right to let me see it. I'm the marshal's assistant, his right-hand man, you might say. I ain't to let it loose. Yeah, forevermore. Just quit bothering me about it, then. I got enough to do. Quite a handyman, aren't you, Jester? Well, uh, Mr. Dillon, this board just had to be fixed before somebody broke his... Oh, this boy's been looking for you. Oh. I got this paper. It's for the marshal. He wouldn't let me so much as look at it. I can't make nothing out of it. Never though. mind, Jester. Oh, you can give it to me, son. I'm the marshal. Oh, here. Thank you. Uh, hey, boy. Hey, wait a minute. I ain't just supposed to give it to the marshal, that's all. Just give it to the marshal. Look at him go, Mr. Dillon. You want me to go after him? No, never mind, Chester. Let him go. All right. Uh, what's it say? Chester, I, uh, I'm going to ride out of town a ways. Well, kind of sudden, ain't it? Uh, does that note say something I should know about, Mr. Dillon? No. I'll be back as soon as I can. <laughs> All right, then. It don't matter to me, none that folks won't tell me nothing about nothing. Seems like there's only one thing around here I'm fit for, and that's using a hammer. Doc! Yeah, Ab. I knowed you'd come. The boy brought me the message. You hurt bad? Bad enough. In the back. Here, let me take a look at it. Uh Yeah, that's bad enough. How long have you been lying here, Ab? Just since yesterday, Matt. I figured to make it to Dodge, but I couldn't sit my horse no longer. Lucky for me, that boy come by hunting rabbits. How'd this happen? On the trail up from Texas, two, three days. Ambush, Matt. Stinking ambush. You know who did it? <laughs> kind of hard seeing who shoots you in the back. Yeah. Matt? Yeah, Ab? I ain't gonna make it without help. You got help. You'll make it. I'm gonna get you to Doc. Uh, Poor 
pour some water into that basin for me, will you, man? I want to wash my hands. Yeah, sure, Doc. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. How about Ab, Doc? Is he uh, going to make it? Well, uh, I don't know, man. He's badly hurt. There's, there's no question about that. Uh, I'll get him a bullet out. will help, won't it? Oh, yes, yes. It'll help all right. At least he wouldn't have had a chance with it still in there, but he, he's weak. He's weak. He's lost a lot of blood. Yeah. He must have been shot two or three days ago, at least. Yes, that's like that. But he's built like a horse. It wouldn't have lasted this long. No, we'll just have to wait and see. Matt. 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 Yeah, Ab. What's my chances? You're doing fine, Ab. Matt, don't fool with me. You know me too long. Am I going to make it? Well, uh, Doc says you got a chance. Yeah. I got to stay hid, Matt. Who's after you, Ab? I can't talk. But he'll come looking, though, huh? Just as long as I'm breathing, I got to stay hid, Matt. All right, Ab. Doc. Yes, Matt? Can you keep him here for a spell? Oh, yes, Matt. I, I was planning to. I want to keep an eye on him. Better put him in the back room. Well, I, I don't like to move him any more than necessary. Well, he thinks it is necessary. Huh? Well, I'll, all right, will you pick him up carefully, Matt? I, I just got that bleeding stopped. All right. Okay, careful. That's it. Uh. You'll be out of sight in here, Ab. Yeah. Uh. Ah, that's, that's it. Now, just lower him gently, Matt. Just, just gent gently. Uh, 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 thank you, Matt. Yeah. You... You won't say nothing. I won't say anything. I'm looking on you later, huh? Well, he'll be all right in there, if he makes it at all. Thanks, Doc. You do everything for him you can. Huh? Oh, of course I will. He means something special to you, man? He's an old friend, Doc. That's about the oldest friend I've got. Oh, I see. Well, well he has a chance. But that's about all I can say. He seems to be in bad trouble. He's in trouble, all right. I wonder if the trouble... With the law. I don't know, Doc. And I'm not sure I want to find out. I declare, Mr. Dillon, it seems like we're eating our supper in the middle of the day, don't it? Yeah, it stays light a lot longer this time of year. I just don't set right with me. Oh, what's that? Why, eating supper in broad daylight that way. <laughs> well, nobody's forcing you, you know. What do you mean? You can wait to do your eating till it's dark. Oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. Oh, no, why not? Why, my stomach won't let me, that's why not. It's nagging at me to feed it by mid-afternoon, no matter what time of year it is. Oh, Mr. Dillon. Yeah? You know that fella, that one in the dark vest standing over there in front of the Dodge house? No, I don't think I do. Why? Well, I just wondered if he was maybe some kind of a lawman or something. We've been asking so many questions around town. Well, what kind of questions? Well, mostly it seems like he's trying to track down a fella named... Hob or Abe or Ab Butler or something like that. Oh. He's asking all over about him. Ab Butler. You know him? Yeah. I better have a talk with that fellow. Oh. Uh, well, is it something I ought to know about, Mr. Dillon? No, Chester. I'll handle it. Oh, gun it. Nobody in there wants to see I'll me. see you at the office. Well, yes, sir. Afternoon. I'm Matt Dillon. 
That badge mean you're the marshal? Yeah, I'm the marshal. Who are you? Well, now, Marshal, my name's Joe Leeds. I hear you've been asking a lot of questions. Word sure gets around, don't it? You're looking for Ab Butler? You sound mighty interested. You know him? It's my job to be interested. I ain't in the habit of asking help from the law, Marshal. What do you want him for? Well, like I said, it ain't no concern of the law. It might be. What do you want him for? Why, it's a personal matter. Just a personal matter. No need for you to interest yourself. Sometimes these personal matters interest me very much. I'll tell you something, Marshal. This ain't going to be none of your business one way or the other. When I find that butler, and I will find him, it'll be strictly between him and me. That's all. And it won't last long, neither. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You can make it my business in an awful hurry, Leeds, and I'll be around just in case you do. Well, now, I sure do admire a man who cottons to his job the way you do. But I'm going to tend to this. I'm going to find their butler, and I'm going to tend to it. And there won't be nothing for you to do at all. I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> Sam, just a short day. I got to get back to the office. Sure thing, Doc. Oh, I tell you, Sam, I sometimes think beer will be as important to civilize in the West as anything. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Ah. Goes down good, don't it, Doc? It goes down good, and it doesn't heat up a man like whiskey does. Ah. It gives him a little time to think while he's drinking it. And it's about as good a remedy for dust in the throat as I know it. Well, you well, sound I... like you're making a speech, Doc. <laughs> he was going on about how good the beer is. <laughs> oh. now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Sam. I didn't say this beer. I was talking about beer in general. Oh, come now, Doc. This beer's not so bad. Oh, no, but it could be a lot cooler. Mm-hmm. What well, couldn't? Well, I guess you're right, Kitty. <laughs> well, it's better than nothing. Thanks very much. Why did you come over to the table, Doc, and sit down? No, I can't get it. Thank you, just the same. I, I got a very sick man up in the office, and oh? I don't want to leave him alone too long. Anybody I know? I don't think so, Kitty. No, I've never seen him before. What's the matter with him? He was shot in the back. Oh. And he's been in bad shape, real bad shape. So, ah, yeah, well, I got to get back. I'll see you later, Kitty. Yeah, sure, Doc. I'll tell you one thing, Kitty. If I ever got me a bullet in the back or anywhere else, I'd sure want Doc around to dig it out for me. Yeah, Sam. He's an awful good doctor. Uh, he's more than that. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah. Taking such close care of a fellow I never even saw before. Staying up there in his office with him and all this heat. You know, I bet he doesn't get paid a cent. Doc's a fine man, all right. Another uh, drink, mister? No more. Here. Oh, thanks. Where's the doc's office? Why, it's uh, right down at the end of the street, mister, and up some side stairs. Uh, there's a sign hanging there. Hey, hey mister, you got some change coming? Huh. Well, I don't know what put him into such an all fired hurry all of a sudden. He, he's been standing here drinking beer most of the morning. Funny he didn't ask Doc when he was standing right next to him. Yeah, it is funny. Hello, Kitty. Hello, oh, Sam. Oh, hello, Marshal. Hello, Matt. You want a beer? Kitty. Hmm? You know that fellow who just went out of here? Will you ever talk to him? No, Matt, I haven't. Something wrong? Well, I'm not sure. I know one thing, Marshal. Oh, what's that, Sam? He can't be feeling too good. He just asked me where the doc's office was. He seemed to be in an awful hurry to get there. What? And that's where he's headed right now? That's what it seemed like. He didn't even wait to pick up his chair. I'll see you later. Matt? There you are. These letters just come. Not now, Chester. Well, my land, I might just run out of here. Leeds! Stay where you are. I told you this was my affair, Marshal. 
Marshal. Don't come after me. Come down those stairs, please. You're not stopping me now. Leeds, you... You should have let me tend to it. You tried to tend to it once, with a bullet in the back. He had it coming. He run off with the money. You all right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester, I'm all right. What money leaves? From that bank down in Texas. We robbed it together. We shot the teller and Butler ran off. He had it coming, Marshal. You better be telling me the truth, Lee. <laughs> Ain't no odds for me to lie. Shape I'm in. You find the money. You'll see. Yeah, I'll see. He... Uh... He's dead, Mr. Jones. Yeah. You know what he was talking about? Yeah, Chester, I'm afraid I do. Car owners, here's news about a revolutionary new product by the makers of famous k -Site. It's new k 3C, a heavy-duty crankcase concentrate for use in all engines. Added to your motor oil, k 3C with Berriman quickly stops hydraulic valve lifter noises, cushions and smooths the engine. It cleans your engine and keeps it clean. k 3C gives protection against acid, rust, and corrosion, too. Add to the oil every 2,000 miles, and you'll have a tough oil that won't thin out. Oil that cushions the load on every working part, cuts down friction, wear, and noise. With k 3C in the crankcase, gas and oil mileage increases, and your engine has more pep and power. Remember, you get results with k 3C or double your money back. Get it at your service station, garage, or car dealer now. Only $1.50. Now, of course, you may be right, Mr. Doan, but it just don't make sense to me for a fellow to run off and leave his gold... After he's went to all the trouble to get shot up for it. Well, it's better to leave it behind than to lose it all together, Chester. Maybe so. I swear I ain't turning up nothing but dirt, though. So. Let's try over there, Chester, under that tree. Huh? All right. I thought you said Ab Butler was laying under this one when you rode out here and found him. Well, he was, but he could have dragged himself over. Guess he could have, all right. Sure is a sight of digging attached to the marshal's office, ain't he, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. That's where I must have dug as many graves as an undertaker. Probably do a better job of it, too. Maybe that's what you're cut out for, Chester. How's that? Maybe you ought to be an undertaker. Oh, no, sir, Mr. Dillon. I admit, I dig a nice, deep grave, but I ain't got no desire to make a career out of it. I'll get... Well, now. What is it? Well, there's something under here that don't belong to be here, Mr. Dillon. I can't quite make out what this is. Well, let me see. Yes, sir. There it is. It's saddlebag. Yeah, get me here. There you are. Yeah. Now, look there. Gold. And lots of it. My land, they sure is. Hey, Mr. Dillon... That Leeds fellow was right. And you was right, too. Yeah. At this time, I'd just as soon have been wrong. Oh, hello, Matt. Come in, come in. Hello, Doc. And I finally got some good news for you. Oh, is that so? Yes, I can tell you now, Matt. 
Ab's going to make it all right. Well, that's fine. Yeah, I was pretty sure yesterday, but I wanted to be positive. And the way he feels today, <laughs> I'm having a hard time keeping him in bed. Oh, he has a remarkable constitution. Remarkable. Can I see him, Doctor? Sure you can. But don't get any wrestling match with him. He might look it. Well, Matt. That's Dylan, you old sheep herder. Hello, Matt. I'm glad to see you. Doc says you're going to be all right. Yeah, he fixed me up fine. He's a good doc. <laughs> yeah, he is. And I'm beholden to you, Matt, for bringing me to him. That's all right, I'd be holding to you for a lot more, Matt. Doc told me how you handle leads. Oh, that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> Cuts more ice than that. He was aiming to kill me. Yeah, he told me. <laughs> well, I ain't surprised you took care of him for me. You always could outdraw any man I ever know. Listen, Ab. I ain't surprised, but I thank you. You don't have anything to thank me for. I don't. <laughs> Carry me in half dead. See, I get patched up. Keep that coyote off of me. And now I'm going to lock you up. Yeah. You're going to what? As soon as you're able. I'm going to take you to jail. <laughs> I remember now. Your face always was poker straight when you told a joke. I'm not joking, Ab. You're not joking? I found the gold. Leads. He told me. Well, all right, all right, Matt. So I robbed a bank. You shot the teller. Well, yeah. He got in the way. But you ain't going to turn me in for it, are you? You ain't a man to forget a friend. I'm not forgetting. But I got a job to do. You got a job to do makes you forget them days of riding and fighting across the whole of Texas? We didn't rob any banks, well, Ed. No, but we... It's the way it's got to be. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Well, you're a U.S. Sure, you're a U.S. Marshal. I'm your friend, ain't I? Yeah. You're my friend. Well... And I've got to lock you up. You really mean that, don't you? I mean it. Well, I got something to tell you, Matt. You may wear a marshal's badge, but you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing but a Judas sheep. You can take your time getting well, Ab. There's no hurry. I'll be around. Why, sure you will. To collect the reward. Shut up, Ab! Rub a bank, you shoot a man. I don't need a reward to tell me what to do. I'll be back in two or three days. Doc, let me know when you're ready. I bet he will. You ain't the Matt Dillon I once knowed. You ain't any Matt Dillon I ever want to know. You're sure changed. Yeah. Was everything all right, man? I don't know, Doc. What's wrong? Well, sometimes you wonder just what friendship means and how binding loyalty should be. And you wonder just who that loyalty is to be given to. Well, I don't understand, man. Oh, uh, never mind, Doc. I'm going to go back to the office. Well, you want me to walk along with you? No, thanks, Doc. I think I'd just soon be alone. If you're the happy driver of the Chevy... Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Richard Beals, Lawrence Dobkin, Barney Phillips, and Joseph Kern. 
Farley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.